BIOS. In this nugget, we talk about the BIOS. We'll start off with just a definition of several different terms that people sometimes get confused. So I want to make sure that we're clear on those. And then we'll talk also about various BIOS functions. What does the BIOS actually do for you? We'll take a look at CMOS, which is a special kind of memory that can store various settings. And we'll look also at the boot process, which is something that's important to understand and also important to understand the BIOS role in that boot process. Later on, in another nugget, we'll talk about boot process and operating system files. We also talk about updating the BIOS. This can be really important for bug fixes or hardware compatibility. And we also will address the setup utility. And we'll take a look at a rudimentary BIOS setup utility so that you can see an example of how that works. I remember a couple of summers ago, I bought a brand new SUV. And of course, I live here in Phoenix, Arizona, where it gets to be 110 and 115 degrees. But I was driving this car. I was real proud of it. I guess it was a symbol of my excess. I mean, symbol of my success. <laughs> and uh, my kids were in the back seat one day, and they said, Daddy, it's getting hot back here. I said, oh, quit your belly aching. The air conditioner's on full blast. Um, pretty soon, though, I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe those kids are right. It is getting hot in here. Turns out there was a programming problem in some chips on that car that would force the heater to come on. <laughs> it wasn't just that the air conditioner would stop working, but the heater would turn on in the middle of the summer on the hottest days here in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, that was a delightful experience. And of course, you've probably already guessed why I was having that problem with my air conditioning or heat in the middle of the summer. Yeah. Computers, right? Who needs them? <laughs> there was a computer that was misprogrammed or had a problem with it anyway. Uh, we have problems also with other computers. That's with our PC computers. A lot of times the programming in our own PCs is not so great either. Well, we start really at a very basic level for that. And to begin with, let's first of all discuss some terms relating to the, how we program low-level items within our computers. And then we can make sure we're all on the same page. And the first thing we'll look at here is, of course, the BIOS. Uh, the BIOS stands for basic input output system uh, what is that i mean that, I, I know what the acronym stands for now but it still doesn't really tell me much really what it does is it loads drivers a uh, driver such as your keyboard your video your your mouse in certain cases uh, what you need to get basic operability out of your computer i mean think about it let's say you had a computer that had no operating system on it whatsoever what do you usually do you put a cd in like a windows xp cd it says press any key to uh, load the operating system or to start setup for example well how can if you press any key but the drivers haven't been loaded for the keyboard how is the computer going to know you pressed a key well it's not going to know that because you see the be the bios provides an interface between the actual hardware of the system and the operating system of the system. So you can kind of see how critical this is to being able to just get the basic functionality out of the system and be able to boot up. Uh, where is this BIOS stored, by the way? Well, it's stored on a memory chip called ROM. You might be looking at that and say, James, you misspelled it. It's, ri it's RAM. It's not ROM. Well, no, smarty pants. <laughs> I didn't misspell it. It actually is ROM. What does ROM stand for? Read-only memory. That's what that is. And the BIOS is stored in read-only memory because we don't want to change the programming of the BIOS. Now, we can, of course, change certain settings for the BIOS that it's designed for. For example, you can change your boot order. Well, you would change that, and you would save that in memory, but it's not really the same as what we're seeing here for read-only memory. The programming for the BIOS is hard-coded onto a chip in your computer, and your BIOS will be, you know, like right here. In addition to that BIOS, when you, you get to the setup menu, for example, some computers you'll press delete or F2, for example, it gives you a setup menu where you can choose various configuration options, and you make your changes, and you save them. Well, where do you save them? Do you save them in the BIOS on this chip? No, you don't. There's an, kind of an accessory chip, if you will, which is your CMOS. And I'm going outside of my box here, but it's your CMOS, and that stands for your complementary metal oxide semiconductor. This is a, a portion of memory that will retain its settings even with the power turned off. The reason why it's able to do that is because there's a small battery. Usually it's a coin-sized battery that provides power to that CMOS, retaining a little bit of a charge so that it can remember all the settings that you've configured. Now, just as a point of reference, I've taken a photograph, a digital photograph, of an Amy BIOS chip. This is just American Megatrans in Incorporated version of the BIOS. Notice that it's in a chip in a socket on that board. Now, for 
uh, maintenance purposes or troubleshooting purposes, if this BIOS were to go corrupt permanently for some reason, uh, maybe someone touched it and hit it with a static charge and corrupted the physical chip itself, it can be replaced. Notice that there's a little space on both sides of this. There's a certain special kinds of pliers that you can use to pull that out and put another one in. So that could be done, although we don't need to do that very often anymore. But if you did need to make changes to this BIOS, when you, when you access the setup screen by pressing delete or F2 or some other key on your keyboard, then you'll see that you can change things like your boot order and certain kinds of hardware detection, power savings, things of this nature. Well, when you make those changes and you save them, you don't save them directly right here in the BIOS. You save them instead, like I said, on your CMOS, which is going to be, it uh, could be integrated into this somewhere, but it would be a separate part of the, the chip. It wouldn't be the actual BIOS itself. More often than not, however, it could also be a separate chip elsewhere on the motherboard. And it keeps that, uh, that information in the CMOS because even though the power is turned off to the computer, there's a battery much like this Sony CR2032 battery, which is a 3-volt battery, that keeps a constant charge to that CMOS. Now, the, the, as a point of reference here as well, this is kind of interesting, it keeps that charge in the CMOS with as little as a millionth of an amp of power. So you can imagine that battery could last quite a long time, and unless the battery is defective or wasn't very good for some reason, uh, normally the motherboard will outlast the, C the CMOS battery. So the motherboard usually becomes obsolete before the battery dies. As a troubleshooting reference, uh, you'll notice that the battery is dying if it seems like the computer constantly loses time on the clock or it frequently has to be reset because that's one of the things that the CMOS battery maintains a charge for. It keeps constantly charging the CMOS so that it can keep track of the clock, in other words, the date and the time. It also retains information such as the hard drive configuration and memory settings on that computer. So again, the battery could be dying, especially if your time seems to get slower or you know, you turn on the computer one day and it claims that it's January 1st of 1981 or something like that. Also, the battery might be good, but over time, especially depending on your environment, there could be corrosion that appears on these contacts. Notice that there's metal contacts that surround this battery. And there's also one underneath the battery. And they get kind of a filminess on them. You can just take an eraser, for example, and rub those contacts and then replace the battery and see if it doesn't maintain time a little bit better. And you can also use, a, uh, of course, a voltmeter to check the charge on that battery to see if it's all right as well. Also make sure that it's installed properly. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a little clip that appears right here that holds down an edge of this battery to make sure that it stays properly inside of this uh, this socket and then there's a black clip over here on this side that it's used to maintain tension on it so that it maintains good contact with a uh, contact on the bottom. So then let's go ahead and address more specifically what the BIOS actually does. I talked to you already the fa about the fact that it has drivers for rudimentary hardware. It's also responsible for managing what we call POST. That's the power on self test or post. It has to be able to see that it has basic hardware there in order to proceed at all. Now, for example, it has to have three key components. It has to have a processor, it has to have memory, and it has to have some kind of video. If it doesn't see those three things, it cannot post properly and you won't be able to start the computer. For example, if you didn't have a processor in the motherboard and you had everything else plugged in and you go ahead and turned on the power, more than likely, it would not even give you a, a power on. It would just shut down completely and would not, the power button would be ineffective. Uh, the same would be true if you didn't have any memory in the system either. Another thing that's responsible for this here, by the way, is that it checks to make sure that the power is okay. In the power supply connector that snaps onto the pins on the motherboard, one of those pins is a power OK signal, and it will send a power OK signal to the BIOS, and once it does that, then, the, then it can complete the post process. If it does not receive a proper power OK, then it refuses to power up the system any further. Also, there's the boot process that the BIOS is responsible for. The BIOS will look for a master boot record on a, on a disk, uh, a master boot record also known just as MBR, and it happens to end in a signature bytes of 55AAH. <laughs> if you want to know the technical details, you don't need to memorize that, but that's just what it happens to do. And then it will look for the first physical sector on a bootable volume, uh, or the VBR, the volume boot record. And once it finds that, then it looks for the startup files for whichever operating system you've got. For example, if it's a down-level operating system, such as Windows 9X, it'll look for IO.sys. Or more current, for the 2006 a objectives, it'll look for NT Loader, which is really NTLDR, and this provides further instructions on how to further boot that operating system. We'll discuss that more when we talk about operating systems later on. 
The BIOS is also responsible for identifying any errors that it finds. For example, you can check that out now if you want.